Hey everybody, welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew Weber. This week on the Linux Cast, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Linux on mobile and why I think that there's no real future for it in terms of success. So let's just jump right in, shall we? If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so on Twitter at the Linux Cast. You can follow me on Twitter at MTWB. You can also email us at the Linuxcast at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash the Linuxcast. You can find all of our subscription links at the Linuxcast.org or subscribe to us on YouTube and with the link in the description. Over the years, there have been many attempts at a free and open source mobile operating system. Uh, from those successful Linux mobile OSs from Nokia back in the late 90s, early 2000s, before Palm and Windows Mobile became a thing. They had these little feature phones that ran a version of some kind of operating system that had the, a, a small portion of the Linux kernel on it. All the way up to the more niche products of today from like places like UbiPort, Plasma Mobile, Lib. Uh, Libre, uh, Libre 5, Purism, I, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of them. The Pine Phone is one of them. Um, you would have think that I wrote, would write these things down, but apparently I didn't. It's really weird. Um, anyways, history is littered with the hopes and dreams of companies and developers who have hoped to bring uh, a FOSS mobile phone or tablet or whatever to market and be successful with it, but they've all failed. And uh, the success, the attempts will continue on, even though there's these failures. I mean, Ubuntu is still around, um, and you know, UB ports is basically what Ubuntu used to be on mobile. Uh, but will the attempts be ever be successful? Those that are currently in development, and those that will someday will be face a very rocky path towards success. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about what that success might look like, uh, what success means really for a Linux mobile platform, why it won't ever happen the way it it looks like it's going right now, and what idea might just prove me wrong should it come to pass. So let's just jump into the next section here. What would success for a FOSS mobile platform look like? The first thing that needs to be said is that there's n that no one would expect this success to look like iOS or Android. It's just, I mean, that's completely unrealistic. Like most rational people, most rational people don't expect Linux to take over for Windows in terms of uh, market share, and they don't expect it to even get up to Mac market share anytime soon. It's uh, it's always going to be like 2 or 3% on the desktop, and it's going to be much more prevalent in the server space. Expecting mobile to do what, uh, to somehow to overtake Android or iOS is just unreasonable and kind of dumb. So what would success really look like? For me, success would look like something like what the Linux desktop has done uh, now. Uh, and that's 2 to 4% of the market share, depending on what metrics you look at. Um, and that's a success, because it's never going to be more than that. Uh, so developers who are interested in developing... So another, things that, uh, excuse me, another thing that it would need would be developers who are interested in developing real applications, not just hobbies. Uh, de de driver support from proprietary hardware makers like NVIDIA and Qualcomm. Um, specifically, because now NVIDIA is going to be owning ARM, both of those companies are going to be really important to any success that a, an open source operating system would have because it would have to support those chipsets. Um, and Qualcomm and just regular old ARM might be doable. NVIDIA doesn't have the best relationship with open source, and, and by that I mean they don't like open source at all, it seems. Especially with driver support. NVIDIA drivers are just... I mean, everybody knows that NVIDIA drivers are bad for Linux. It's just, I mean, a, a way of life. And, and they're proprietary, right? So that's something that the, a FOSS mobile operating system would have to have. 
Uh, it would also need a full-fledged app ecosystem that re rivals the big boys, similar to what we do on Linux. So, um, for decades, people bitched and complained, oh, if I'm, if I'm going to use Linux, there's no apps on Linux. I don't have Adobe or Microsoft Office or you know AutoCAD or whatever. Um, today, those aren't really big problems because there are free and open source options like GIMP and Inkscape and LibreOffice that are maybe not as good as the proprietary options, but they're reasonable alternatives and you can get your work done on them if you can adapt to that kind of workflow. And a f mobile operating system would have to have something similar. So you'd have to be able to compete with the big app stores and have reasonable amount of crossover between types of apps productivity gaming is a big one on i mean gaming is as big as gaming is on the pc it's nothing compared to what gaming is on mobile and if you, you don't have anything in terms of game on mobile you'd have a problem um so i said productivity gaming um you know customization apps and you know full spectrum of of just things that any platform that wants to be successful is just going to have to have that's what if, if uh, an operating system got to that point then that could be deemed successful and the problem is I mean let's just I mean we, the, there's so many reasons why this is never going to happen but just to kind of transition from that app idea uh, apps are kind of like the whole chicken and egg thing it's one of the reasons why Windows Mobile phone series 7 or whatever they called it back in the like 2010 ish reason uh, you know it's kind of the reason why that didn't succeed is because it never had the proper developer support and it was never going to get proper developer support until it had a higher percentage of the market share and because you know it's the chicken and egg thing like i said it's a one didn't happen because it needed the other to happen, and that one didn't happen because it needed the other to happen. It's really, uh, it's it's a big problem, and it's going to be the same thing for Linux on mobile, because in order to get the big boys developing for it, it would need a bigger market share. In order to get bigger market share, it would need the big boys to develop for it. Um, that's one of the reasons why, even if it saw the success I called success at two four percent, most of the developers are just going to be those that develop. FOSS software now, and that's perfectly fine. It's just never going to be more than that. One of the reasons why Linux has become much more popular than it was 20 years ago is because a lot of people dislike the two major OSs out there. If you've used Windows, if, say you've used Linux for a year or two or whatever, and you all of a sudden have to go back to Windows, you're going to hate it. And maybe you switch to Linux because you hate Windows. There's a lot of people like that. Um, some people like it because, like Linux because of the privacy concerns that Windows presents. Some people don't care for the update mechanisms. That's pers my personal peeve. Um, that's the reason why Linux has gotten to the point where it is now. And also because Linux has been so successful in the, the server space in, in, in the corporate world, it's kind of that interest in developing software for corporate use has kind of bled over into the desktop area. Um, and that's very unlikely to happen in mobile. So Linux on mobile right now is where Linux was in the early 1990s. It's starting at the beginning. Now, sure, it has a better code base to work from. So it's they're all being based off from uh, existing desktop environments and code bases and a much more robust Linux kernel than was around 20 years ago, obviously, and much better hardware support. Um, but most of Linux quote-unquote hardware support is for Intel-based systems. So they're still working on trying to tweak and finagle it to work on different kinds of RISC-V-based architectures. Um, and it's not there yet. So uh, the OS will actually be more stable. So though, though oh, if an any of these operating systems that come to fruition or whatever and become you know usable will be stable faster than GNU slash Linux was but it's 
not the same world today as it was 20 years ago. Linux ha then was competing with PCs which weren't in the mainstream. I mean, most people didn't have a PC until the late 90s. And and the real flaws that Linux and, and they, the o, those OSs had real flaws that Linux could exploit and say, hey, we're better than Mac OS. We're better than Windows. The question I have to ask, what can mobile Linux right now point to and say it's better at? It, it's open source. So if you're a, you're, you're a FOSS advocate, that's a reason why you'd want to use it. But most people aren't, you know, open source advocates. Most people don't even know what open source is. They just want to go buy a, a, a cheap phone that does their thing. Or maybe they want to buy an expensive phone that they can show off to their friends. But that it, it, it's possible that it, a Linux mobile operating system offers modularity of hardware. Like, um, I think Google called it Project Treble, maybe? Then maybe that's what they call it. They, I mean, they they tried this where you could flop, swap, flop in, where you could swap in different kinds of hardware pieces, like a better camera, but bigger battery, and things like that. There's a Linux, uh, there's an open source company that's doing the same thing. Uh, it just flopped. I mean, it's not it's not something that people are really interested in, outside of being, you know the nerds. Uh, another thing that over the years, the a Linux mobile operating system has, has tried to offer is continuity between devices, mobile to desktop, meaning you can carry one device, hook it up to your monitor, and have a full computing experience. That, too, has been tried over and over and over again in the last decade. Samsung has DeX, or whatever it's called now. My first experience with it was the Motorola Atrix back in the, like, 2012-ish, maybe 2011, something like that. It wasn't It wasn't good. I mean, it wasn't a good experience. That, from what I can ex tell, the Dex experience isn't all that great now either. Um, and I mean, Linux itself has already tried this. Ubuntu Unity was built upon the idea of being able to use one UI across multiple devices. That's the reason why you have those big icons along the side even today, even though they don't use Unity anymore. It's so you can touch them. They tried to do it. It didn't work. Nobody bought it. Nobody wanted it. it. It was bad for the most part. I mean, Unity itself on the desktop was usable and continues to be even usable now. I mean, I mean, there's a reason why Ubuntu went to, to GNOME now. Uh, it, it just has a better code base. It, it, it was easier. It's easier to maintain because it's more broadly used across distributions. Um, so, I mean, like I said, Linux has tried the continuity thing. So uh, the question I just have to ask, where is Linux on mobile better? Why is it better? Why would it be better? Why should e even FOSS advocates want to use it? The real answer is that they don't. Most FOSS guys and gals have interest in Linux on mobile only because it's cool, not because it's useful. Everyone who has a Pine phone or a Librem 5 also has a real phone beside it that they use when they need to do real work or want to play a game or whatever. I mean, it's just, I mean, maybe there's some, you know, hardcore Linux fanboy out there who just has an open source phone, but most of them have an Android phone. Uh, the only place where Linux might have an opportunity is in the extreme low market, uh, and I'm talking like less than $100. And I, I'm calling this iffy because there are tons of Android phones out there from $50 on up. But most of them are kind of terrible until you get to the round of the $200 mark. So between $50 and, uh, and $200, Linux has an opening. Uh, if a Linux phone can be below that and be better than the low-end Android devices, specifically in terms of applications, or at least it needs to be as good in terms of applications, and it has to have a decent camera because everybody cares about camera. It doesn't have to be top of the line. It just has to be good enough. And an experience, right? It has to be an experience. And one of the, I'm, we've talked about this before. Linux has a, a, a fragmentation problem. Pro problem. We have 12 different organizations working on 12 different operating systems, and that's a problem if you want to have mainstream success. Is limited developers, limited money and resources, 
I mean, also competing standards and and all that stuff. It's a, it's all going to be a huge problem, even if they only focused on the the low end. And if you only focus on the low end, there's no profit in it. So it's not going to draw in more developers and or more hardware partners. Now I know what you've been thinking this entire time, but Matt, what about Android? Isn't that Linux? Uh, no. Well, I mean, kinda. Android use, uses the Linux kernel an out-of-date kernel, but it uses a Linux kernel, but it isn't really open source like what we're talking about with a Linux on mobile device. Google controls the entire stack of everything that makes Android Android and controls who uses their proprietary Google Play services. The What it's based, Android is based on is based on the Android open source project, AOSP. It's a, it's a non-Google version of Android that is open source and is mainly contributed to by Google. You can, it is open source, so you can take it, you can modify it and audit it and, and fork it or whatever. It's great, it's a good idea, but it's also not what is on the billions of Android devices that are out there. Nobody who uses an Android device today outside of nerddom uses AOSP, they use Google's Android. Google, Google takes AOSP and puts all their Google germs on it. And all which are proprietary and closed source, and you're left with something that only has a passing resemblance to what AOSP started off as. Um, also, for those who argue that Android is Linux, I ask this. What makes Android usable? It isn't that it's Linux. It isn't that it's based on an open source piece of software. It's the apps. It, back in the 90s, Bill Clinton beat the first... The first George Bush by saying, keep it simple, stupid. Well, to me, it's the app, stupid. If your, your platform is going to be <laughs> successful, it has to have applications. P people are, I mean, it, it was worse maybe five years ago. People were obsessed with, oh my God, I can't use this uh, platform because it doesn't have this particular app or whatever. It, it's not so bad these days, mostly because we take apps for granted because mostly if you want apps it doesn't matter which platform you choose android or ios chances are there's either the exact app you're looking for or you know one that's extremely similar because i mean there's, there's billions and billions of apps out there and that's something that linux mobile could never you know compete with now there are false alternatives to android that work on AS, aosp and associated forks like uh, in terms of apps, I mean, uh, like F Droid. F, F Droid is an open. I now I might be wrong about this. It might I I think it's an open source app app uh store. I mean, it's not really a store. It's like it's more like an app collection. It's like a third party app. I mean, they call it a third party app store, but it's not really a store. Um, but mostly, you know, it's an alternative to Google Play, I and mean, it's where you you install a better version of Firefox to get away from the crappy updated Firefox that they just released, which is what I did. It's If you use a non-Google version of Android F, and F-Droid is your, your app store, chances are you're probably braver than I am. I have F-Droid on my phone. Like I said, I installed uh, Fen, Fenric, something like that. It's the fork of Firefox that's behind it because the new one's terrible. Uh, it can make your phone usable if you're using AOSP or something that's non-Googled. -Google, uh, but it doesn't have the breadth of software that uh, Google Play does, and it makes and that makes it kind of less interesting for regular people. All right, conclusions. Why won't Linux on mobile succeed? And there's so many reasons. There's the fractious, there's the fragmentation of so many different uh, developers working on different projects. There's the app problem, which I consider the biggest problem. There's the fact that it's been tried over and over again, and something we didn't really talk about is that people are happy with Android and iOS for the most part. Developers aren't happy with iOS, uh, and they don't make a lot of money on Android, but that doesn't stop them from developing from them because there's those the audience for both of those platforms is just, just so huge. You can't compete with with that when you know. It's just, I mean, it's just billions and billions of devices out there that have these operating systems on there. You can't compete with it. It seems like I'm completely writing off Android and Linux, or Android and Linux. Matt, you're dumb. Linux on mobile. Learn how to read. <laughs> 
And to, to a degree, I guess I am writing it off. Uh, if developers who are working on Purism and UB ports and Plasma Mobile continue on their path as they are, Linux Mobile is doomed to being a severely niche product that only FOSS advocates use. And even they won't use it full time, even if it gets really good. Uh, it won't ever reach the fairly low heights that Linux on desktop has gained. It just won't. Um, I mean, it's disappointing, but I believe that that's true. The problem with Linux developers and FOSS advocates is that we really want to build things from the ground up. It's one of the things we always do. If, if the best example of this is fragment is not fragmentation. It is um, package management systems. Every distro has to have their own. <laughs> I mean, some distros based on you know Debian or Arch or whatever, but those base distros, the big four, the big four, you know, Ubuntu, Arch, Fedora, and um, OpenSUSE. That was the other one. It, it, they all have their own package management systems. There's Solus that has built their own package management system. There's uh, Gentoo has its own package management way of doing things, and they all have spent time and effort development wise on developing these things that basically were already set I and mean, I, I don't know what package management system was first it was probably a precursor to, to apt-get or something i'm not sure uh i haven't been around that long but you know they're at instead of coming together and saying hey this is our package management system that we're going to use all across the linux uh, distros no we each all had to build up from the ground up our own package management systems and it's you know, it's a mess. It's the reason why Snaps and Flatpak exist to try to solve that problem. Uh, what it means for Linux on mobile is that our small community is building up from nothing. The big, while the big boys continue using their huge budgets to surpass us and making it impossible for us to catch up. My solution. Nobody really cares what my solution is, but you know, I have a solution and I care about it, and that's really all that matters. Since I'm the one talking. Uh. My solution is that Linux on mobile should be AOSP. Somebody should take AOSP. Uh, like, I don't know. Um, what's the... There's somebody who's actually doing this. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm completely drawing, drawing a flake. But anyways, they should take AOSP and make that lib Linux on mobile. That should be, they should fork it so they can have total control and develop it from there. Maybe take upstream... Uh, fixes or whatever from and from Google, and, you know, whatever. Just make Google one, you know, uh, contributor to it, make, so they're not, you know, in control. It supports the va vast majority of devices, I think, out there. So, uh, and it's, uh, you know, continuously upgraded by, by Google and it has security fixes and all that. It isn't starting from nothing. It has broad support across devices, and it has application support. Linux devs just need to take that, fork it, build a FOSS alternative to Android on top of it, make F-Droid or whatever the app store. Don't have like 12 billion app stores or package management systems. Just this one way to go, that's the solution. It's AOSP. Now, it'd have to be a fork of ASP. If it was just AOSP, Google would still have way too much control over it. But if you fork it, which I believe is possible, uh, just build off from it from there and then be in control of your own fork of it. Um, and whether you take, you know, fixes from Google after that, that's up to you. Um, I mean, in, in this scenario, it might even be possible for somebody to put Google Play on it if that's what they wanted to do. So, anyways, that is, those are my thoughts on Linux on mobile. My rambling mess of talking to myself once again. Um, Incoherent ramblings is what I should rename this podcast. What do you want from me? I'm just a dude sitting in his office at quarter after one in the morning talking about Linux on mobile. Now, if there isn't more of a nerd thing in the world to do, I don't know what that is. Anyways, if you again, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so. Uh, email at the linuxcast.org. I think is the email address. I, I really got to memorize these things. Uh, no, excuse me, the Linuxcast at gmail.com. I forgot I used to don't have that other one anymore. Anyways, I'm looking for a co-host. I do so much better when I'm not talking to myself. 
Um, if you're a Linux noob or a intermediate user, uh, intermediate user or an expert or whatever, come talk to me. I want to talk. I need somebody to talk to do some of these topics with. Anyways, coming up next. Um, I'll get away from my lonely spiel. Uh, why NVIDIA and ARM is, is terrible for Linux? So in, NVIDIA just bought ARM for like $40 billion. Um, and that's just not a good thing for Linux. So we'll talk about that next time. We'll see you then.